sexy sizzling news. Empire. Today. Are you tired of living with stained and worn out carpeting? Does the den look like bears spent the winter with you? Spring is here, and so is Empire Today's half off your project sales, starting now, but only for a limited time. Save 50% on a huge selection of carpet, hardwood, and laminate, standard padding and materials, and basic installation. Call the Empire Today half off your project sale hotline now. 1 855 385 0681. Empire Today's free in home estimates are easy and smart. Choose from high quality flooring in the rooms where you'll use them with your lighting so you can see the color best. We'll do the measuring, you do the selecting and saving. But first, you must do the calling. Everyone loves the half off your project sale. Even bears. Call the Empire Today special hotline 1 855 385 0681. 1 855 385 0681. Empire Today. Select styles. Details at EmpireToday.com. Blog Talk Radio. Hi, this is Kelly McAlpine of Kelly Six Stories, and today my guest is Terrain Hicks. Today's discussion will be about sexual astrology, which is indicated by your Venus sign and Mars sign. And we will also touch on what is sex magic and its benefits, what is tantra and tantric sex. But for right now, I plan on playing a song entitled Bed Breaker by Gutter Game Monsters. I hope you enjoy. Track Slammers. Ha! Yeah. This is the challenge. Sweet. Get him. Follow me to the room, bro. Take a few pills, oh. Baby, hurry up because you won't be needing no. There ain't no telling when we go finish. When I get in there, we will be no love. I give it to her all night Lil' mama bad and her best friend is a dyke Look how she shake it but her body stay still And she down for whatever, shout it, smoke and pop pills I'm ballin' baby, so come roll with a star Yard tent, so don't trip, they can't sleep in my car We can get it on, I'm recorded on my phone Shout it, squeezing on me like she bout to have a newborn baby What's up? Hey lady, let's go back to the crib or something So I can get you in the room and have them walls jumping. <laughs> shout it, cold blind nigga, try to holler let me show you, best believe that young can't get it well. You won't reach the room, bro. Take a few pills, oh. Baby, hurry up, because you won't be needing no. There ain't no telling when we go finish. When I get in With a bad ass She ride for a nigga Keep my pistol in a bag But she got class Like a student I treat that pussy like bubble gum Let me chew it <laughs> Like a car in reverse She back it up She don't never trip I put it on her face like makeup She say easy where you with My body running hot What you feeling for your loving And it want some dope cop Well I got it So let me be it up and call it boxing. I'm trying to make you blast off like a fucking rocket. I'm only here for a spell, so let's blow it hell. I got your head ringing, cut <laughs> doorbell.
Okay, again, the song is by Gutter Gang Monsters, and it's called Dead Breaker. It's off of their mixtape called Monster Life. Now, if you would like to have one of your songs played on my show, please email me at kellysexstories at gmail.com. Hello. Hi, Mr. Davis. Hello. How are you? Hi. How are I'm you? fine. I'm fine. I'm great. All right. I'm ready. I'm ready. So, um, How long has... Mm-hmm. No, go ahead. I'm sorry about that. Um, how long have you been involved in doing videos about astrology, and how can people find you on YouTube? Well, if you just type in my name, that's Terrain Hicks, T-E-R-R-A-N-E, last name Hicks. You know, all my videos pop up. Now, the funny thing about my videos, I actually started about two months ago. And now I've hit, uh, it only took me two months to hit um, 500 subscribers. And that's because, you know, people have been begging me to do YouTube videos for years now. So I just got on to do videos and... um, I I upload a video every other day. I'm going to stay on that schedule for about a year straight. So, you know, it's a project that I put a lot of energy into. Okay. So how did people know that you had the knowledge uh, about astrology before you actually started making videos? Well, very good question. So, you know, unlike a lot of people, you know, I was trained into um, metaphysics metaphysics by my parents at a very young age, you know, from like five, six, you know, I I actually, that was the first thing I learned was actually astrology, you know, and um, so it's pretty much been embedded into me, and um, I started actually teaching uh, around 19, you know, so from that, you know, people have been um, asking me to do videos, so, you know, that's where I'm at now. Okay. Now, uh, what are a person's sex planets, such as Venus and Mars, and what's the, what is the significance of the sign of those planets? Okay, so um, Venus and Mars, I'm going to start with Venus. Okay, Venus is that 100% love, sexual energy, sexual attraction, um, anything within Venus or that planet's energy is going to do in that area. Um, For example, Friday would be Venus's day, okay? And um, it's a a statistic um, proof that most of the sex occurs actually on Friday, you know, um, when it comes to Mars, Mars is very aggress- aggressive, and Mars deals with that red energy, you know, that sexually aggressive or that sexually, that sex passion energy. So when you're dealing with Venus and Mars, it's um, some real potent sex energy, okay? Um, Mars also deals with excitement. So, you know, dealing with that Mars energy, Sex can't be boring, okay? You know, the planet or the energy around that planet won't allow for that. So, you know, dealing with Venus and Mars in conjunct, that's some really intense, fun, exciting sex. Okay. Now, what about if a person has, um, let's say, a person's Mars, with the male or female Mars is in conjunction with their mate's uh, moon? How would that affect your Mar- relationship? Okay, so Mars in conjunction with Moon. Mars, again, aggression. Okay, uh, passion. Okay, now the mate, Moon. Okay, Moon is emotion. Okay, so, you know, I'm going to take it back to the days of the week. You know, Monday will represent the day, or Monday will be the energy that the Moon, you know, shoots most of its energy on the planet, and Monday is actually the most moody day. People are not in the best of moods on Mondays. Um, it's a very stressful day. So when you're dealing with Mars and Moon, 
it's almost op- it's almost polar opposites because you got that excitement uh, dealing with that moodiness, but then you know the moon uh, represents feminine energy and also I would say um, nurturing. So that moon energy would actually help balance that Mars energy out. So that's actually a very good um, combination. Okay, very good combination. You know. Okay. Yeah, because I was reading that um, that when the Mars and Moon are in conjunction or they're uh, trying to one another or sectile, that that will make uh, like a magnetic attraction between the two people, sort of like yeah. how Pluto is. That Pluto is a magnetic planet, and the yeah. ruler of it is Scorpio. So, like, when Pluto makes an aspect to a person's Mars, that it's also a very strong uh, sexual attraction as well, which is different right. from Uranus because Uranus kind of, like, it wants the unconventional. It wants to break boundaries and things like that. So um, mm-hmm. would mm-hmm. you say that Uranus, if, it, if it's in conjunction with a person's Venus or Mars, that it will bring excitement, a lot of excitement and Something that is uh, spontaneous to the relationship. That that's that's a hundred percent correct. Because remember, Uranus deals with uh, investigation, excitement out of the ordinary. Okay, and you know you're dealing with that Venus once again. So that Venus is always going to master when it comes to sex. Okay, so this is someone who's going to keep sex fun, interesting, exciting. Trying new things, learning new things, and that will continue to persist, and that will never die out within that person. So, yes, I would say that. You're actually 100% on point with that. Okay. Now, um, the next question that I want to know is, how how come in society today sex is such a, like, a root chakra type of situation? What I mean by that is... It's only it's looked at and, and being referenced to uh, lust and physical gratification, and there's little if there's little and almost no emphasis on spiritual or esoteric importance. That is because of a lot of fa- factors, but mainly because when you get into that elevated level of sex. There's very little one can do to oppress you, you know. Um, For example, like in Tantra, in real Tantra, they have what's called a level 10 orgasm. And it's a feeling or an orgasm that actually lasts for hours, okay? And it's equivalent to cocaine. It gives you that much euphoria, okay? And... If most of the world knew of this, then you would not have drug addiction because people will learn that they can get that that euphoria through sex, okay? So to keep oppression up, you got to keep sex at that low level. Sex is also what they say, you know, modern monks even today say that sex is actually one of the quickest ways to elevation Uh, when you deal with the higher form of sex. So that's why society is in that mode because um, it's a a good way to keep people oppressed, depressed, needing things. And um, a lot of it has to do with currency. You know, a lot of it has to do with currency. So, you know, that's why they're throwing the porn and the, the lower energy root chakra things at you. And as a culture, most of us believe that sex is a bad thing, you know, that's why. Mhm. That's true, especially when you're talking about people who are who are in church. I'm not trying to give people any bad names who are Christians because I, I too, was going to church, and um, I grew up with that philosophy, but I'm just saying that there's a lot of people who are saved or people who go to church who believe that sex is dirty, and it actually those uh philosophies that actually get started with the Catholic Church because when we think about religion it means to bound or to hold back. 
But the the funny part is is that a lot of Christians don't realize that the Bible is actually based off of astrology. That's right. And then the Catholic Church, their mandate against sex was really because of all the wild things that the Romans were doing. Right, they were right, into, right. You know, pedophilia and uh, you know, bestiality and other type of um, type of things well, that's well, not you know acceptable. When you go back in history, um, you begin to learn that sex has all, or the level or elevation of sex has always been a major part of history. So, for example, when you have the animalistic era of sex. And then you have the elevator era of sex. You have two d- distinct um, occurrences. So, for example, you know, the ancient Egyptians, they were extremely into sex. You know, mm-hmm. it was a very potent, free part of their culture. Therefore, they were able to do um, outstanding things. Now, when that level turned into perversion, you know, I'm talking more in the European era, you see that... um Things have downgraded, you know. So sex always, whether you want to acknowledge it as bad or good, is always going to be a major factor of how the planet is um, acting, you know. Okay. Now, um, what is the spiritual advantage of practicing sex magic, and what is sex magic? Okay, so sex magic, so when you go to regular sex or mundane sex, I would call it, you got two people connecting with a lot of energy, and when they both orgasm or ejaculate or whatever, they just throw that energy out, throw it away, boom. And that's a terrible thing to do with energy, especially sexual energy. Because sexual energy is creative, meaning it's divine, okay? That is a godlike energy. It can create things. So sex magic is the, pretty much the practice of using that energy while you're feeling good or when you get into that peak of orgasm to you and your mate to both focus on and visualize attracting something. What happens is that same creative energy that can create a human being actually manifests whatever goal you have. Okay? So that's pretty much the gist of what sex magic is. Hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So let's say if you wanted to get that promotion on your job or you wanted to attract more money to you then you would do it on you would do it on a certain day and so would you do it according to the lunar phases or would you do it according to the phases of the sun that's a very good question so um lunar phase is a very good idea okay so you want to go into whenever it's time to ask the moon for something okay Mm -hmm. So that would be a full moon, that would be a new moon, okay, and um, boom, you have a discussion with your mate, okay, we want to have this, cool, you both engage in sexual intercourse, and again, you wait till that peak level of orgasm to really focus on what it is. When you get to an orgasm, your, your brain actually thinks at 0.6 thoughts per second. So it's actually at its quickest rate of thinking. And that's the point in which whatever you're thinking is most likely to manifest. Okay? This is also a very good way to strengthen your relationship because the both of you are using sex to help accomplish or manifest your ideas. So the bonding between a couple uh, is strengthened, okay? Um, also, the sexual chakra, which is the sacral chakra, chakra, is closely linked to the money chakra. And um, 
another funny thing is 40% of you make more than 40% of other people that are not in an active sex life. You know, that's a scientific fact, you know. So sex and money go hand in hand. So, um, what tantric positions are best for a female and which tantric positions are best for a male? Okay, very good question. Um, how do I answer this? That's a good question. So, every single position actually has a healing benefit. I can't go over all of them on the phone, but I'm going to give you one for an ex- an example. Um, and I will say that both positions are actually best for both um, genders. But a woman laying on her stomach, you know, uh, and a guy is in the back of her, and they're kind of like spooning, That's uh, that heals the spleen, okay? Missionary heals or sends a lot of chi energy to the heart. You know, that's the best way to get a heart-to-heart, you know. Um, when a woman is on top, that is a good way for um, a man the, uh, to get the energy for the man to be a little more submissive. And also, it has a lot to do with the healing of his heart and his kidneys, Okay, hmm. so you know what I'll do, you know, because if I go deep into it, you know, it, it'll take a minute. I'll, I'll do some videos on it for all of you, on which positions heal what parts of the body, you know. Okay, yeah, I look forward to that. Mm-hmm. Okay, and um, let's see what else did I want to talk about. Um, is it true that when a female absorbs a man's sperm, that she is taking in his information and that his information is going to be with her uh, forever. His essence will be with her forever. Very good question. So um, before we even go there, when you kiss another person, you're taking in their DNA and your information will be with them forever. So when you take in someone's semen, that's even more potent. And yes, their information, their code will be with you forever regardless, okay? It is very true. It is very true, okay? Um, there's healing benefits as well, you know. It is an antioxidant. You know, it can help. Uh, it's also an aphrodisiac to do that, to take in uh, semen. But, yes, you will carry a part of that person for, for life. Okay. Now, what if mm-hmm. if the if the male if he's of a of a low vibration? Now, how would that affect the woman on the esoteric level? You know, how can she is she able to try to cleanse any of that negative energy that he might have given her by entering her her her, uh, her vagina, which some people say is also a portal? How you know what can she do in order to cleanse her energy? Very good question. So yeah, that is very destructive. And, um, you know, to expound on that a little bit, you know, a lot of women that choose to have a lot of mates, you know, you find one thing is that they're stagnant in life because their energy is all over the place. You know, this guy, he was low, and this guy, he was high. So it, it'll put them in the middle of nowhere energetically. And then um, to cleanse from that uh, um, spiritual bath or a few spiritual baths, you know, um, also, you know, if you really want to cleanse from a person that you know is low in vibration, you can't have any interaction with them, okay? Talking on the phone with them is not even recommended if you're trying to get that energy off of them after sex, okay? So, um, yeah, like I said, spiritual baths, um, sage baths. So that means you burn a lot of sage on your aura, a lot of it. Um, you also want to, um, you got to do a lot of aura work, a lot of aura work. Also, 
certain herbs to cleanse your body out, certain laxatives to cleanse your body out. Like, you have to do a lot of cleansing, and you have to really realize the importance of not interacting with that person energetically on any level, you know. You know, again, the cell phone is a very good, you know, even that text, texting back and forth, you know, you're still telepathically communicating. And, you know, you can't see what's coming off on your aura to his, but, like, you know, you when you're texting through the phone, it's telepathic communication. And um, that goes right into your aura, you know. Very good question. Okay. And so, also the man, if you if a man is dealing with a, a female that's of low vibration, then he can also do the same technique, right? Which is burn the sage, do a spiritual bath, and you know, cleanse his aura, right? Yeah, it's a lot easier for the man to mm-hmm. get rid of that energy because he's external. Okay, mm-hmm. so this is why men don't have as much trouble getting over relationships as women. You know, but yes, he can do the same things, you know, sage baths, the spiritual baths, you know, with essential oils, you know, for example, lavender would be very good, you know, getting that person's energy off of you, you know, Mm -hmm. um, meditating and just really cleansing and clearing energy off your aura. When you're, when you're focusing on clearing that energy, you want to go straight to your aura. That person has, I will say, infected your aura in a sense. And that's mm-hmm. the energy you have to focus on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So can crystals be good in um, in doing that? <sighs> okay, so crystals, right? Because crystal, it, it depends on the crystal. So like, mm-hmm. you don't want to use a quartz crystal for that because quartz crystals do nothing but enhance the energy. You know, more mm-hmm. like a citron, um, more like an amethyst. Okay, uh, black onyx. A lot of the black, uh, the black crystals will work. Hematite, you know, that'll help cleanse. But you know, even when using that cleansing, you have to sage off the crystal right away. Very good question. But again, like if, if you're trying to get that energy off, stay away from the quartz because it's only mm-hmm. going to enhance the energy that's already on you. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Okay. I really appreciate you, Mr. Hicks. I learned a lot, and you gave me a lot to. <laughs> to look into and to research, but um, the show is about to end in a couple seconds. Okay. But I really appreciate well, you talking to you. Well, it was great being on your show. Thank you. Thanks, I, thanks I, a lot I for having me. I look forward to speaking with you before. Yeah, I, I look Take forward to, to speaking with you again. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.